Hello everybody, and is everybody keeping well? Oh, I am so delighted to hear that. And me, you ask? Oh yes, not doing too bad. Fair to middling, as they say hereabouts. And what have I been up to? Well, this is coming to the end of summer, which means it is harvest season. So let me show you what I've been harvesting from my little English country garden. These are carrots. And I just picked these just for a quick afternoon snack. Look at the size. They're lovely carrots. Very tasty. Real carrots grown in a garden are a lot different from those you get at the supermarket. And then I decided to pick my runner beans. And I had so many, I filled my kitchen sink. And how about these cucumbers, eh? Believe it or not, those are just about 16 or 17 inches long, almost 45 centimeters. Lovely, tasty cucumbers from my greenhouse. And these tomatoes, well, these are really beautiful specimens. They're the big boy variety. And believe it or not, I've got nearly a kilo of tomatoes in those two. Little over a, a pound and a half, actually. So I've been keeping busy harvesting things in the garden. As I say, I do like a garden I can eat. <laughs> So where are we off to today? Well, I had a message from a fellow who goes by the YouTube name of Solar Phonics. He said, could you do a flight from Luton, which is E-G-G-W, to Bristol, E-G-G-D? And of course I can. Of course, that's easy peasy. And I'm going to be doing a domestic flight today from one side of England to the other. Now he says he lives in Bristol and he's creating a simulator very similar to mine. But he's a musician and does composing, but he's housebound. I did a little check and looked at his YouTube site and he's got some very interesting videos there, so you might want to go check him out. He also has a website where he describes the music that he's making with some examples. Well, we are going to go from Luton, which is one of the main London airports. It's to the north. And we'll go to Bristol, where the saying is ship shape and Bristol fashion. So we shall have to be neat and tidy to go there today. There are no direct flights, I did check. In fact, all flights between Luton and Bristol are connecting flights. You've got to go through London Heathrow or Gatwick or some other place like that in order to get to Bristol. But we, of course, are going to make our own route. And for sceneries, I've got two very excellent sceneries and they're both made by the same designer. UK 2000. So, Luton EGGW Airport Scenery is made by UK 2000, and so is Bristol EGGD Airport Scenery. That's also made by UK 2000. So, thank you, Gary, at UK 2000, for the beautiful designs that you've created. Right. Okay, it's time to go then into 
pre-flight and check out the weather. It was raining outside here this morning, so we'll have to see what our journey is going to be like today. Well, here we are in windy.com and I've got it up here now for EGGW, which of course is Luton. And here you can see Luton here to the north of London, just a bit north of St. Albans. But the wind is sweeping across from the west and it is going at quite a good clip. Looking here, it says, Wind is 250 degrees at 19 knots. Visibility is 10 kilometers or more. Clouds are broken at 1500 feet, overcast 2000 feet. Temperature is a comfortable 21 degrees. Q and H 1015, just a little bit above standard. But look at this. It says here it is minimum VFR at the moment. Minimums. So let's have a look at the runways. Well, if the wind is going in this direction, then it looks more than likely we'll be taking off from this runway right here. And where we will be parked will be somewhere in this vicinity here is where we'll be parked because most of the aircraft all seem to be parked in this area here too. Going over to our destination, here we are. And here you can see Bristol, right by the estuary here. Bristol, of course, is famous for being a, the main west port, shipping port of England. And it was like that for years. So it's right on the, on the edge here. But there's a, whoa, a lot of wind coming in from the west. Wind 260 degrees, 15 knots, 10 kilometers or more visibility, overcast 200 feet. And for that, it has got IFR right there. So we may have to have IFR going in to land at Bristol, or we could just simply do it as Ryanair 186 <laughs> and do our own thing. <laughs> Who knows? But we'll see. Runways, well, here you can see the runways are pretty much east and west. So we'll probably be coming in on this same runway here, this one here, 27. All right, let's go into sim brief. We are Ryanair, we are 186, we are leaving from EGGW and we are going to go to EGG Delta. And LL is our alternate, we'll look at that in a moment. Here's our aircraft frame, where there's the registration, standard profile, cruise profile is six. It's talking about departure 25, arrival 27. No surprises there. We are still going to be full. And of course we have one ton of champagne and caviar on board. So it looks like if things go pear-shaped at Bristol, then we're supposed to go back and go back here to Heathrow. So they want Heathrow to be the alternate in this particular case. Well, we'll try not to uh, mess up. All right, let's go ahead and uh, save that and generate the flight plan. Well, here's what it's returned. It's given us the origin, destination, and there's Heathrow. It's given us flight level 120, 12,000 feet. Airtime, it says, is 28 minutes. Block fuel is right there. Routing is set. It says planned optimum flight level. And it is a very short run 
between the two points so naturally we're not going to get too very high are we here's the information in the flight plan itself so there's our designation and right there of course is the flight level it's given us here is the route and EGLL is our alternate cost index 6 we'll need to know average wind is there there's the block fuel reserves 2,531 kilograms and the trip and taxi is 1,540 no tankering recommended there's the entire route i'll post this in the description box below the video here's the descent information well we're not going to need 20,000 feet or 15,000 feet because we're not going to be getting up that high so basically we'll just need to put in this one figure for in our descent profile here's the wind information for Flight level 140 will be 2,000 feet below that, but it gives us a good indication. And you can see here it is a pretty consistent, stiff west to east flight direction. So we are bucking headwinds all the way. And here's the vertical profile. Taking off from Luton, going up to top of climb and then a nice gradual descent down into Bristol over here. Okay, let's go into Navigraph Charts. We click on Flights, New Flight from Simbrief, and there's the one that we just made. Here you can see Luton, and there's the route across to go to Bristol. Click on this, open the charts. We're going to need to know the airport and the parking stands and coordinates for our departure. We're going to be on the... So this is our departure route. Here you can see we go out here, across, and then make our departure in that direction. I'm going to pin that to the bottom. And then over here, I'm going to open up the charts list for Bristol. We're going to need the airport information and the airport stands. Coming in on runway 27, we'll be using the category 3 ILS DME runway 27. So I'll pin that. And here is the overlay for the arrival chart. Pretty straightforward. I'll pin that also. Looking at the approach chart here, what we'll need to do is we'll need to come down here and intercept it to make a pretty much straight in approach and landing in Bristol. So click on this and final. So we'll make a change and we'll bring it in from here to intercept with that to come in for a final approach. Right, let's go into the cockpit and get ourselves ready. Well, there you are, Solophonics. Do come on in and take your seat. We are here at Luton Airport. And we are at stand number five. Stand number five. And this is a remarkably detailed airport. Very detailed indeed. Looking out over the left hand side, you can see how detailed all of those buildings are. And that's an easy jet <laughs> aircraft parked next to me there. And then sweeping over here to the right, you can see we're right at stand number five and passengers are self-loading today 
and they come along a walkway and then over here to the right you can see I've got an easy jet park to the side of me and you can also see just how overcast cloudy and threatening with rain it is here in England today this scenery is magnificent scenery it is really detailed and it's made by Gary at UK 2000 UK 2000 uh, are the ones who put this out and the frame rate well because of the high detail and I am using three 4k monitors and I'm using it at full resolution I also have active sky running here and there's a lot of cloud that is being generated so my frame rate is 18 17 18 frames per second not particularly brilliant but very good for all of the high intensity screens that I've got okay well it's not raining at the moment that's probably not the thing to say of course but um, I wash the windows <laughs> just so that we could have a clear view of the of the journey today and I don't know if that's going to be a waste of time or not but the fuel is on board so we're all ready to go so the first thing that we do is we turn on the battery we make sure that we have enough volts here turn on the fuel pumps and then let's get that APU started wow this is really detailed there's one aircraft taking off over there my goodness me this is this is really lovely scenery okay the low oil pressure light has come on the engine gas temperature is climbing and in a moment there's the low oil pressure light has now gone off so it's looking good this is a small jet engine by the way in the tail of the aircraft and apart from providing us with a generator for electricity it's also giving us heat and air conditioning as necessary and now it's coming back down stabilizing I'm looking for this light to switch on there that says we have 115 volts coming into our system so now I can turn on the galley turn on the emergency exit lights no smoking fasten seatbelt signs left and the right uh, heat I'm going to leave the probes off I am going to turn on the IRS to get the GPS aligned and here I'm going to turn on the electrical hydraulic pumps the forward service hatch is open and the equipment stairs are down so that's going to allow all of our passengers to start boarding very shortly now I'm going to turn on the APU bleed turn on the recirculating fans and now the packs and listen there's that rush of air going through the system and it is now putting well at 21 degrees that's what we've got it's probably putting a little air conditioning into the cabin just to freshen things up because it is a muggy day out here all right and then turn on the steady light and now we are set to program the FMC well the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that the air rack is in date and the no problems there the program is not showing any errors go to position and we are of course at EGGW and we are at gate 5 and there it is it came up with the gate so I'm going to put that straight in there 
Now the GPS has our start position. And here I'm going to go to root and starting out again and we are at E G G W and we're going to go to E G G Delta. We are flight Ryanair R Y R one eight six. Put that in. Go to next page. We're going to go now on the flight plan and that is going to go to CPT. So CPT is our first point. And now I'm going to put in a different waypoint that we had on the flight plan. I'm going to go to POMAX. I'm going to show you that in a moment. So P-O-M-A-X. And activate, execute. All right, now I'm going to go into the fix, and that was the E G G Delta. And we need a four mile circle. We need a 10 mile circle. And we need a 30 mile circle. Go to descent, forecast, transition level. We're leaving that as it is because ATC controls that. But we only need the information for this flight level. And the Q&H at our destination is 1017. And the information is 269 at 32. 269 at 32. And execute that. Now we go back and we go to departures so we're listening to the ATIS to see what the weather is reporting listen airport information delta one zero zero five zulu wind two five zero at one niner visibility greater than 20 miles sky condition ceiling 1600 broken temperature two 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 point one four altimeter one zero one five landing and departing runway two five VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back hold short instruction. Advise controller on initial contact you have. Delta. Right, we have Delta and it is showing the active runway is runway 25. So I'm going to put in 25 and the departure is CPT4 Bravo. So put that in right there. Now I go back to departures and arrivals. We're coming in on ILS runway 27. So ILS 27 is that one. And I'm not going to show any transitions. I'm just going to leave it at that. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. Right, I'm going to go to legs. And I'm going to switch the plan over here to show the route and the departure and I'm going to go through each of these steps showing the route going out there's the CPT and I'm going to bring that up and then it goes to POMAX I just put that in that by the way was on the uh, star for the arrival at Bristol but now it's taking us straight down to CF 27 and right in line for landing on runway 27 at Bristol so that's the reason why I've done that okay switch back to map so we've got a good one there and Click weather on that, put the data on. I'm going to put ter ter terrain on yours and data. And now I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that we can be seen and go to anti skid over here. Our local barometer is 1015, so I have that set in. Now I'm going to go to radio and put in 50 feet for our minimums for when we arrive at Bristol.
Our altitude today is 12,000 feet, so I'm just going to go ahead and put 12,000 feet in. 12,000 feet up here also. The landing altitude, the airport elevation, is 622 feet. So that's going to be 600 feet in this. And this, of course, is for pressurization. Not that we're going to notice too much. Ah, all of our self-loading cargo uh, are on. So I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the hatch. There's the stairs coming up. Hydraulic things they are. Very easy, very compact. As we're taking off from runway 25, the, it's going to be 254 degrees for our course heading. So I'm going to put 254 in each of these. And I'll do yours over here as well. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Root, perform the initialization. Now the fuel plan. We have 4,762 kilograms on board. Reserves are 2,531. Trip and tax is 1,540. That comes to 4,071 kilograms or 4.1. 4.1. Trip uh, reserves are 2.5, 2.5. Cruising altitude is 12,000 feet. Cruise wind is 269 at 28. 269 and 28. Transition altitude, leave it the same. And now I'm going to put in cost index of 6, double click this, and it calculates everything for me. And execute that. And one limit, but we're just going to put that in and let it go at that. We'll do flaps 10. Center of gravity is 23.4, the trim wheel is going to be 4.79. One click on each of these gives us then the, the value for this, which is 144 for takeoff. This is the V1, that's the rotation, and that's the liftoff speed. Okay, I've now got the Mac in here. I'm going to turn on the yaw damper, flight continuity light went out, flight director on here and here, and push the VNAV, push the LNAV, we have green lights on both, so I'm now going to arm the throttle, VOR1 is going to go on and I'm going to put the frequency of the localizer at our destination which is 110.15. So now that is in on the VOR over here. Okay, looking good so far. We need to now get our clearance. So let's contact the ground and get our IFR clearance. Newton Ground, Ryanair 186, ready to copy IFR clearance to Bristol. Ryanair 186 is cleared to Papa Oscar Flight Alpha X-Ray Airport as 5, fly runway heading, climb and maintain, 8000, departure frequency of 129.55, squat 1123. Ryanair 186 cleared to Papa Oscar Mike Alpha X-ray airport as filed fly runway heading climb and maintain 8000 departure on 12 minor point 55 score 1123 Ryanair 186 red back correct contact ground on 121.75 Well that's interesting they clear this to an airport which is actually a waypoint well that's 
one of the oddities of the program, I suppose, but we are definitely going to go to Bristol. So now I'm going to request a taxi. Newton Ground, Ryanair 186, we're Delta, ready to taxi, IFR. Ryanair 186, taxi to and hold short of runway 25 via taxiway, Bravo Alpha, contact tower on 132.55, when ready. Taxiing, hold short runway 25 via taxiway, Bravo Alpha, Ryanair 186. Right, we have our clearance to taxi, so let's get ourselves organized here. I've got the Navigraph charts active and running and you can see it over here on my right. Right, everybody looks like they're all good. Everybody's sitting down, sitting good. And let's do a quick check. Fuel is correct. Windows all locked. Seatbelt signs are on. Check. Door lights are out. Check. MCP is programmed. Check. Takeoff thrust bugs are all in. CDU pre-flight content rudder aerolon trim is done. Now, we're going to need to push back, get our nose to the right and our tail to the left. Okay, good. And which engine would you like to start today? Number one or number two? Number two engine? We'll start number two engine. Now I'm gonna put the anti-collision light on and we'll contact the people at the ground to give us a pushback. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our left. Roger that. Ready to push. Tail to the left. Park brakes off. Parking brake is off. Brakes released. Right, I'm going to turn off the air conditioning now because we need all of that air to go to spin the engines. And I'm going to switch to generator 2 on here. Here we go. And, and here we go. I'm now starting engine number 2. The start valve has opened. The engine is winding up. The N2 is building up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'll introduce the fuel. And coming up, 23, 24, fuel is introduced. Now I'm looking for the engine gas temperature. Oh, look at that, it really does take off. Now I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. It did. And we should be able to hear the engines in just a moment. There, we've got an engine start. Good. And checking this, we need 115 volts. We have. So switching now to start engine number one. Start valve has opened. And it's starting to build up. Push back complete. Parking brake, please. Parking brake is on. And Great here set. it is, it's building up very nicely. When this gets to 24, I'll bring in the fuel. There's the fuel. I'm now going to look for the engine gas temperature right, to go up here. Disconnected. Watch for the slip release from guidance on your left. Have a good flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And this is building up very nicely. Looking, it just went out. We're getting a good engine start. Things are sounding good. And looking up here, I'm looking now for 115 volts. And we have 115 volts. So for both engines are now generating electricity. So I'm now going to switch to the main engines, turn on the air conditioning again, turn off the APU bleed, and turn off the APU. I'm going to go to Flaps 10. I'm now going to turn on the taxi lights and we'll just check after start. Generators are on. Probe heat is now on. 
Anti-ice not required. Isolation valve is correct. Engine start levers down the turn. Okay, flight deck door closed and locked. Recall check. Flight controls are checked. Flaps. We have green lights. Stabilizer trim is correct. Auto brake is RTO. Speed brake lever down detent. Ground equipment is clear. So we are now ready to taxi to the active. And I'm going to verify takeoff speed. Good, no changes there. Okay, lights on. Attendance, we are getting ready to move. So, break off. Make sure nothing's coming and no problems. And give a little boost to get ourselves unstuck. This is a, a very tight uh, area in here, so we do have to be sure to stay right on that yellow line, otherwise we will clip somebody's aircraft and they will not be very happy. at the detail of this though isn't this incredible detail there are all sorts of aircraft around here there are Gulf Streams there are Learjets really really detailed this is a very busy airport and they put a lot of work into the detail incredible detail Ground, orbit 5536, five, taxi to the gate. Orbit 5536, five, five, taxi to gate 5, using taxiway, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Bravo. Taxiing to gate 5 via taxiway, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Bravo. Orbit 5536. Five, I'm watching my speed while we're still on the apron because they do give tickets, you know, if they catch you speeding. We swing around here and then we go to the left. Looking good. Oh, there's a big jumbo jet here on our left. Looks clear. And there's an aircraft in front of us. And there's one coming in to land. And there's Ryanair. You give the salute. <laughs> and there's the one coming in to land over there. Well, we go all the way down. And then we'll get our clearance to take off. Here's a Thompson TUI flight. And there are vehicles, airport vehicles around here but fortunately none of them have decided to morph into a kamikaze. See, the British, we do it right. <laughs> Luton ground, orbit 4277 IFR2, land vector ready to copy. Orbit 4277 is cleared to land at airport as 5, fly runway heading, climb and maintain, 11000, departure frequency is 129.55, squawk 6641. 
And there's another aircraft coming into land. Airport has filed five runway heading, climb and maintain. One one thousand departure on one two minor point five five score six six four one. Orbit four two seven seven. Red back is correct. Contact ground on one two one point seven five. When ready to taxi. All right, we'll swing around here, go to the whole short lines, and then request takeoff permission. Luton ground, orbit 4277, we're Foxtrot, ready to taxi, IFR. Orbit 4277, taxi to and hold short of runway 25, using taxiway, Bravo, Echo, Delta, Foxtrot, Alpha, contact tower on 132.55, when ready. Hold short runway two five using taxiway. Bravo, Echo, Delta, Foxtrot, Alpha. Right, I'm going to tune into seven, the seven. tower. Clear to land runway two five orbit three six eight nine. Luton Tower, Ryanair one eight six, ready to go runway two five by FR two. The Bar Oscar Mike Alpha X ray. Ryanair one eight six, hold short runway two five. Traffic is Airbus A three twenty one on short final. Hold short, runway 25, Ryanair 186. Well, there it is, they've just uh, landed. 254, exit runway when able. And we'll do the takeoff briefing, we're okay on that. Engine bleeds are now going on. And engine start switches, uh, cabin is secure. All the lights are on. Switching to position light, steady, and strobe, and starting the clock. Everything is checked and ready to go as soon as they give us permission. Orbit 8254, turn next taxiway. And there is another one coming in to land, so I hope that we get out before it comes in. That's still on the runway. Ah. Perhaps it's starting to turn off. Orbit 8254, turn next taxiway. Orbit 8254, contact ground on 121.75. 121.75, orbit 8254. Alright, give us a clearance. Before this one comes in. Oh, they're going to make us wait. There's one out there coming in. He's quite a ways off. But now the gear is down, so he's on a short final. Well, perhaps after this one, we'll get a start. There it is. Coming in, propeller. And nose down. Orbit 3689, exit runway when able. Well, 
Well, I don't see another one on final, so perhaps when this one clears the runway, we'll be cleared to take off. You know, that's the benefit of having these large screens that give me 180 degrees of view. So I can see if anybody's coming in to final and I can see if there's anything on the runway. It really is, it does improve the illusion dramatically. It really does. One looks like he's turning off. Exit runway when able. Orbit 3689 contact ground on 121.75. Ryanair 186 cleared for takeoff runway 25. Cleared for takeoff runway 25. Ryanair 186. We are cleared for takeoff. So we'll go before they change their minds, eh? Orbit 3689. some cloud. Is that a little bit of lightning perhaps? And here's the view as we climb out of Luton. abatement section all right we're doing very well everything is looking good 
Engine bleeds are on, check, packed, auto, landing gear up, no lights, flaps up, no lights, altimeters set, both good. We're on our way. Right, Solophonics. It isn't a very long trip, but if you want to nip into the back right now, we've got that champagne and caviar that we're serving. And uh, there it is. That's the clue to tell the staff to start popping the corks and unscrewing the jars. All right. I'll give you a shout as soon as we are on our approach into Bristol, okay? Which, of course, is your hometown. Okay, see you in a few minutes. Phonics. Come on back and take your seat and help me land at Phoenix, at uh, Bristol. Bristol, we're coming into. Ah, almost had the wrong place there. We are just over the top of Pomax and now we're turning towards Bristol to intercept the final if we get approval. So let's check with ATC and get ourselves some clearance here. So. Requesting full stop. Right, we have our clearance to land straight in on runway 27. I've just changed the uh, barometric pressure so we are on track and everything is looking good. Now, did you get enough to drink and to eat back there? Did they take good care of you? Oh, I am so glad to hear that. Oh yeah. It always helps to have a bottle of champagne in you when you're coming into land. It works every time. <laughs> okay. Well, we're all set up, so now I'm gonna go to flaps five. We need to start controlling our speed a little bit here. And the flaps are going up. We are 20 miles, DME miles from the airport. And the clouds have broken up a little bit, but there's still cloud ahead of us. But I still don't have the airport in sight yet. It's somewhere out there. It sounds like there's a bunch of aircraft ahead of us too. So we'll have to keep our eyes open. Beautiful scenery around here though, absolutely beautiful. Oh, 
and there's the Bristol Channel over there. Some of the great sailing ships that Britain ever built sailed down that channel. You know, this is really delightful scenery. I'm going to have to take some video of this. Look at that. Look at the detail of the countryside surrounding Bristol. And you can see there are clouds up ahead. Most of them broken up as we were coming in on our descent. So we're not doing too bad. But it looks like we're about to lose visibility now. Right, everything is set up. I've got... This is now going into 267 to match our next course heading. And we are pretty much holding our altitude at the moment. We have to descend to 2,500 feet when we get to CF27, that's when we need to be at 2,500. Well, we're in the cloud now. Let's hope that we can break out a bit for a landing. Right, I'm going to go to flaps 10. Everything is looking good. 
we have the airport in sight, the runway is in sight, we have two white, two red, and well, shall I do it? Look at all this beautiful scenery here. All right. I have control. Ha! Uh, and how much champagne did I have to drink, you ask? Ha! Uh, oh, well. 1,000. 1,000. Uh, 
And there's Ryanair. And there's another Ryanair. Easy Jets. Thompsons. There's a lot of different aircraft here. My goodness. But the cloud is still around, as you can see. This, of course, is... Three, clear for takeoff, runway two, seven. Clear for takeoff. This is UK 2000 scenery. Beautifully put together, really detailed scenery. My goodness me, look at the detail. And there's the tower. Well, there are vehicles up ahead. Let's hope none of them are going to interfere with us. This is 23 that we're just crossing here. Let's go into the main uh, terminal. That's where all the posh people come in, you know. And we are posh. We have champagne and caviar. Oh, this is very good. Garriott UK 2000 has made sure that all of the vehicles are all kept on specific roads and do not interfere with us. No kamikazes. I like that. And there's the sign saying Bristol Airport. This is number one, it's occupied. Number two has a fuel truck there, so I'm going to go in and stop at number three. So I'm going to pull into number three. Cas is off and right fuel off APU off battery off shutdown is complete right well let me show you where we are at here look at this look at the detail we're at stand number three and we are at of course Bristol Airport where it says amazing journeys start here and also end. And there's the arrivals. That's where all of our self-departing passengers will exit through. Really good detail here. Look at that. Delightful scenery. And the frame rate is 20, 21, 20, 21, right around 20 or 21 frames. And I'm using uh, 4K monitors, of course, and I have all the stops pulled out for all the detail. But this really is detailed. Oh, I don't know if you can see it right there, but... On that uh, registration plate for this uh, uh, tanker, 
It's got UK20 REF. <laughs> Very good. Very good indeed. UK2000, of course, is the scenery <laughs> manufacturer. So, Solophonic, we have made it to your hometown of Bristol. I am delighted that you asked me. Thank you for the suggestion. I hope that we made a good flight for you and that it was one that you approve of. I appreciate very much being invited here. And I'll see you again on another flight. And everyone else, remember, book your flight on Ryanair 186 next week. Same place, same time. Bye, everybody.